Hello and welcome to Tenant Tech. I'm your instructor Clark and today we're going to learn about designing timber frames using the 3D CAD program SketchUp. This is part one of a five-part series where I introduce SketchUp and show you some of the basics. Nice and slow. timber frame design was often done without even using pencil and paper. Timbers were stacked up in the desired configuration, and the joints were scribed onto each other. A few folks still work that way, but most modern practitioners use some kind of computer software to create plans that are then brought to the shop floor, where they are used to lay out and cut the timbers. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I do that using SketchUp and the timber framing extensions. Here's an example of a model that I've created in 3D. Uh, right away you can see that this is something that would be useful for showing to your clients to help with the presentation, show what, uh, show what you have in mind, and of course uh, I've even included a couple of cute kids and their puppy. Um, just ignore the bright colors for now. We'll get to that in just a second. I'm going to just go to just a bare frame view, and I want to show you a few more things that this software can do. I'm going to zoom in on this post and go to x-ray mode and you can see that I've modeled all of the mortise and tenon joinery. I'm going to turn off x-ray mode and just take this post and move it away from the model for a second and you can notice that I have modeled all of the tenons but not the mortises. There's no mortises cut in this timber. Let me put that back in the frame where it goes and then I'm just going to say make shop drawings. Now what happened here is that the software automatically found all the tenons and created the mortises in the timber and then you're showing you all four sides of this for your shop drawings. One other thing we can do is we can get a material list. Now here I'm going to use Excel but you can also export to CSV so you can use Google Sheets or some other software. You can see that uh, it exported all the timbers here. Here's the names of the timbers, their sizes, even the board feet. Uh, here's the scantlings. We also have a tally view that, that kind of co combines all the different sizes, and this is something that you would send off for your order to the mill. I'm not going to save this. Uh, I'm just kind of doing an example of what the software can do. The software I'm using here is called SketchUp. Now, I'm not going to tell you that uh, learning 3D CAD software is easy. But in my opinion, SketchUp is the easiest 3D CAD software to learn. It works on Mac and Windows. It's reasonably affordable. It's about $350 a year. Uh, you can get a 30-day free trial if you want. There is a, a free web version, but that doesn't export, that doesn't support uh, extensions or plugins, which I'm going to make extensive use of here. We'll talk more about that uh, later. But that's still a great option for sharing a SketchUp model that you've created with someone else, like a client. They won't have to pay for the software in order to, to take a look at the drawings that you've made. It comes with a 2D drawing program, a companion program called Layout, and that's what we can use to make uh, professional looking shop drawings like these. SketchUp's used by many timber framers, both for joinery design and whole house design. Not, not just the timber frame, but showing all the doors and windows and floor plans, all that stuff too. We're not going to cover that in these videos. We're just going to focus on frame and joinery design. Now, I'm not going to give a full tutorial here on SketchUp Basics. There are tons of YouTube videos on that already out there that you can find. I'm just going to quickly go through a couple of basic ideas so that we're on the same page with terminology, etc. The first thing I'm going to show you is just how to move around in your model. Uh, what I'm doing here is called orbiting, and what I'm doing is holding down the middle mouse button and moving the mouse. Yes, you need a three button mouse with a scroll wheel, even if you're on a Mac. To move in and out, I roll the scroll wheel. And between those two things, I can pretty much go anywhere I want in the model. If I hold down the shift key and the middle mouse button, then I can pan and that's how you move around inside the model. I'm just going to click to another view here. This is a, these are called scene tabs up here, and they can quickly take you from one view to another. The next thing I'd like to show you is how you can make your own timbers. First, I'm just going to get in here and delete this existing center post and see if we can't recreate that from scratch. 
I'm going to type R to get the rectangle tool. And note what happened to my cursor. It changed into the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to drag and drop to create a, a, a rectangle. And that's way bigger than I want it. I'm going to type the exact dimension that I wanted, which is 10, 10. I hope you noticed that as I was typing, that appeared down here in the VCB. Now, note that I didn't click in here. I just started typing at the appropriate point, which is right after I'd finished using the tool. I typed the exact dimension that I wanted. I'm going to do something similar here now when I use the push-pull tool. I can either select that from the menu here or use the shortcut key P for push-pull. The way you use this is you click on a face and then you drag it. See what's happening in the VCB? It's now telling me I'm at 8, 3 and a quarter. I'm just going to drop the timber here and then type the exact distance that I wanted, which was 8 feet. And then the, the timber adjusts to be exactly that height. And now I just need to move it into position. So I'm going to use M to move. And, oh wait, that's not quite what I wanted, is it? It's moving just part of the timber and leaving the rest behind. What I want to do is I want to group all of this loose geometry together. These are just edges and faces. And I don't want to move them individually. I want to treat the whole thing as a group. So what I'm going to do is select all of the components, all of the geometry rather, right click on it, and I can either say make group or make component. Now, in my opinion, components are better, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I'm just going to say make component, and then I need to give it a name. I'm going to call it my timber. And now when I hit M to move it, I move the whole thing. So what I'm going to try to do is position it where I want it now that I've created it. And you can see that I'm struggling to get it to go just where I want it. This is a key concept in SketchUp. It's very important where you pick up something that you're trying to move. Now I'm going to notice that the, what I want is the top of the timber to align with the bottom of the tie beam. So I'm going to grab it by the top. And now when I move over here, now I can put it exactly where I want it, which is on the bottom of the tie beam. Now it's not positioned correctly left to right. Let's do that next. Now when I'm hovering over things, you can see that the, the cursor is, is kind of wanting to, to uh, snap to certain places. It likes to snap to intersections. And another one is the midpoint of a component. So what I'm going to do is take advantage of that and I'm going to hover over the midpoint of the top edge of this timber and there I'm going to click it to pick it up and then I'm going to drag it over and then it wants to click to that midpoint. So there I'm going to click it again to drop it. So now I've got it where I want it but the length is incorrect. So what I want to do is I'm going to use that push-pull tool again and I'm going to drag the bottom of the post so that it's the right length. So if I hit P for push-pull, uh, notice that it's not letting me push-pull on that face. And the reason is that I'm not hovering over a face. I'm hovering over the component that we just made. We're hovering over the post. If I want to get inside this timber and edit an individual face or edge, what I have to do is double-click on it. You can see that these dashed lines have been drawn. That tells me that I'm now inside the timber. That's my new world. And if I hit the push-pull tool now, uh, you can see that the face highlights and I'm able to stretch that timber to the length that I need. Now I could do the math and figure out the exact distance that I need to move it, but it's going to be more convenient to simply find something else that's lined up with that same distance, like this post here, and click. And now the bottoms of the posts are aligned. I'm going to hit the space bar to set down the push-pull tool and back to the regular select tool. And if I hit escape, I'm no longer editing the timber. I'm inside, I'm uh, no longer inside the timber. I'm now back in the, the full model. Now, just a moment ago when we were collecting all that loose joinery or loose uh, geometry that made up the timber, I suggested that you make a component instead of a group. Let's talk about why components are better than groups. I'm just going to click on this post here and up here in our entity info window it shows me that this is uh, a queen post and that there are four of them in the model and if I take and modify this you can see that when I change one I change them all you can see the four on the back the two on the back side are moving too um, that's one advantage uh, another advantage is that these can be saved to a library so that you can reuse them uh, for example, here I've got uh, a bunch of uh, components in this library, and I can grab something out of it. I can grab one of these queen posts that's already made, all the joineries on it, and I can quickly just drop that right into my model.
I've got a component library that I've made that I'm willing to share with you. I've got several, but the one I'm going to share with you is called uh, Full Size Timbers or FS Timbers. And in the link below in the video, you can go to my SketchUp Resources page on my website and you can find it there. Let me get rid of that post that I just made and we'll go back to the standard view here. The final thing I want to show you today is how you can extend SketchUp by downloading extensions from the Extension Warehouse. An extension is a piece of software that someone else has written to customize SketchUp for a particular reason. And if I go to the Extension Warehouse, I'm going to give you an example of one that I've written that you can install. It's called Rotate 90 Degrees. If you just start typing Rotate 90, you'll find it. Uh, it's this one here. And when you click on it, there'll be an Install button. Just hit Install. Go ahead and say yes to the warning and that will install it to SketchUp. And let me show you how that one works. Um, if I right click on this, I can say rotate 90 around blue. And I just find that that's a lot easier than using the move tool and clicking on this and getting it to line up exactly where we want it. Uh, another thing that makes this plugin particularly useful is that you can assign it to a hotkey. If you go to file, I'm sorry, window, preferences and shortcuts you can look for rotate and there it is rotate around blue and then over here I've assigned mine to the F5 key you just hit F5 and hit the plus and hit, say yes and okay and now when I hit the F5 key you can see that I can quickly rotate that timber 90 degrees I've got a few more shortcuts. Um, there's a that X-ray mode. I've used. I've mapped that to Alt X. You can quickly look inside and and see uh, what your what your joiner looks like. Um, I've been talking about a few others that are built in. M for move. Um, Control Z will put it back. Um, P is the push pull shortcut, and you can map those to you know whatever suits you and in, in your workflow. That's all we have today from Ten and Tech. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and we'll see you next time. Take care.